This morning we're going to look at another aspect of algebra that we need to learn this year, and that is absolute value. This is chapter 1, 4, and solving absolute value equations. Absolute value is a very strange concept. So let's talk about it. Absolute value really does talk about the distance a number, the absolute value of a number is really talking about the distance that that number is from zero on a number line. So if we have a number line, let's put zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Over here, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So let's look at these numbers. <coughs> See how far the way. If I want to go from 0 to 5, I will have gone a distance of 5 marks. Whatever I may call them. 5 centimeters, 5 miles, 5 feet, 5 inches. Let's go this way. If I want to go from 0 to negative 3, how far have I gone? 1, 2, 3. I have gone 3. 3 inches, 3 centimeters, 3 miles. So actually the absolute value is a measure of distance from zero. How far is that number from zero? Now, as far as we're concerned, distance is what we call a scalar. It represents one value. And distance as a scalar is always going to be non-negative. We say non-negative because distance can be what? can be zero. Okay? That's not positive, nor is it negative. But typically we think of absolute value represents distance is non-negative Okay, that means it is zero or positive. Okay, it is positive. Alright, now, how do we write absolute value? The absolute value of any number A looks like that. We put bars around it. Those bars also act as act as grouping symbols. Now, where does that come into play? Anybody know? That's right, grouping symbols. In our order of operations, they act just like grouping symbols, just like parentheses, or if I can draw this, braces, or brackets. Okay? So, that means whatever's inside of these absolute value bars, we're going to do first and get that value. Okay? And then we're going to go on and do the rest of them. They act just like grouping symbols. <clears throat> now, what is a real statement? Well, let's get down to it. For any real number A, absolute value if A is positive or zero, then Absolute value equals A. For any real number A, the absolute value of A, if A is greater than zero or equal to zero, then the absolute value of A equals A. If A is less than zero, then 
the absolute value of A equals negative A or the opposite of A. Let's do a simple example. Okay? A equals 5. Then, absolute value of 5 equals 5. Alright? A equals negative 5. Then, absolute value of negative 5 is the opposite or the negative of a negative 5 equals a negative negative 5 equals 5. Okay? Alright? Give you an example of what that is. Now, <clears throat> Let's do some examples of this. Let's take 1.4 plus 5y minus 7. y equals negative 3. Okay? These bars mean this right here. We want the absolute value of this right here. So let's work this out and see where this takes us. 1.4 plus 5 times negative 3 minus 7, okay, replacement, 1.4 plus negative 15 minus 7, 1.4 plus negative 22, the absolute value of negative 22, okay, now let's take the absolute value of negative 22. How far is negative 22 from zero? How many places is it away from zero? It's 22 places. That's right. 1.4 plus 22 equals 23.4. Okay? There's one example. Let's try another one. Let's use a little different color. Let's try another one. Absolute value of 4, x plus 3, absolute value of this quantity, minus 3, 1 half. X equals negative 2. All right, let's replace. Absolute value of 4 times negative 2 plus 3 minus 3 and 1 half. Make sure these bars don't look like numbers. Okay, let's do inside because these act as groupings. Absolute value of negative 8 plus 3 minus 3 and 1 half. Okay? This is absolute value of negative 5 minus 3 1 half. Let's go over here. What is the absolute value of negative 5? How far away is negative 5 from 0? How many steps away from 0 is it? Well, it's 5. So that's 5 minus 3 1 half equals 1 1 half. Okay? Another example. Let's do one last example of, uh, of this. 1 and 1 third minus 2y plus 1 where y equals a negative two-thirds. Working with fractions here. Now, most of you have, you know, you want to go, oh, I'm going to change those fractions to decimals real quick. Don't do that. Leave them as fractions as long as you possibly can. Okay? Leave them as fractions all the way through, and let's see what happens. <laughs> let's replace. One and one-third minus two times negative two-thirds plus 1. Okay. Let's go here. What can we do with this 2 to make it into a fraction so we can easily multiply that? Can 2 be represented as a fraction? How can we represent 2 as a fraction? You got it. Divide it by a 1. So let's do that. 1 and 1 third. 2 divided by 1. Negative 2 over 3 plus 1. 
Okay? Let's do what's inside here. Top times the top, bottom times the bottom. One, one third times absolute. Oh, I'm sorry. We've got to have a minus in there, don't we? Got to bring that down. You don't bring that down, we're going to be lost. Negative four thirds plus one. <coughs> okay? Now let's change colors because we're going to go up over here. So let's change colors. We're going to make it right there. So, one, one third minus the absolute value of. How else can we express four thirds? That's equal to a negative one and one third, isn't it? Negative one and one third plus one absolute value. All right, let's do this. If I have a negative one and one third plus one, what, that's, what is that going to equal? You got it. Let's do it. That's just simply going to be negative one third. Okay, now, how far away is a negative one third from zero? That's what this says right here. How far away is a negative one third from zero? Let's make this into a one so it looks more like a one. Okay? All right, it is one third away. So what does this say? One, one third minus. This changes to one third. What does that equal? All right, was there a need to change those fractions into decimals? No. Every one of them fell right out. This right here, it's a fraction. Can we multiply by a fraction? Yeah. We can change this fraction right here into one and one third. Takes care of this. We're left with this. The absolute value of that, it all drops out. Okay? Those are examples. Absolute value, remember, the absolute value of any number is always going to be its distance from zero. Distance is considered non-negative. Non-negative means it's equal to zero or it is positive. Okay? So absolute value is always going to be positive. Whenever you have absolute value here, these things here, they represent groupings, just like parentheses. So make sure you do what's within those absolute value bars first.